Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are here in the desert with a very special guest. His name is Peter Sage, and we're here with him not only because he's a great entrepreneur, starting more than 20 companies in his lifetime, not only because he is a great teacher, impacting the lives of millions of people around the world, but also because he is an extraordinary human being. And I think that everybody in the world can learn from him. Now, welcome, Peter. Thank you, Martin. It's a pleasure to be here. Likewise. Now, I still remember, Peter, it was two months ago, and we were sitting with Jimmy watching your London Reel YouTube talk. And, and we were just amazed. We, we watched the whole thing. And if you haven't checked the interview from London Reel, I really recommend you to go check it out for yourself. But I remember we saw you and we said, wow, we really would like to meet you in real life. And now two months later, we are sitting here and uh, here we are. videos. Can you tell a little bit about how that happened? Well, I mean, as far as I remember, uh, I was uh, sitting in my office and my secretary uh, forwarded an email. And that email was from uh, yourself and Jimmy, uh, essentially uh, saying that yeah, you'd seen my work, which I, I get a lot of those emails. But there was something different about that. There was something that uh, was uh, that resonated because you'd actually taken the time and the trouble to research a lot of the stuff that was important to me. You tapped into the fact that you know, my mission was to be able to help spread my message online. You'd, you'd mentioned several things that made me feel that you're not just a, a, a normal fan, um, but yeah, there's, there, there's really a, a sincerity behind your willingness to help me push my message forward. And I was mm. touched by that. And so I sent a, a voicemail back and uh, I recorded a little audio to say thank you guys. And I'm, I'm actually interested and open to, to chatting with you. And uh, I, I believe you were quite happy when you got that audio. Very, very happy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just want to have one more question because sure. you've been mentored by great people and I, I guess you've been a great uh, mentee because I was here today where one of your mentors called you mm. <laughs> just to catch up. And I was wondering, what does a, uh, what does, what, how, who is a great mentee? How, uh, how do you become a great mentee? Because many of our students are watching this and they're wondering, okay, I will reach out, uh, I will get over my confidence issues, I will reach out to my personal hero, I would like to, to get in touch with them, to offer them value. But what happens after that? I mean, maybe you already also had like mentees yourself, somebody you think is a great example, you maybe can sure. share one of the characteristics of them. I'll wrap up with this. I'll give you an example of, of what isn't and what is. Hmm. You know, and in my 20s, when I was learning personal development, I was becoming successful, and I would, I remember times I would go to the gym, and I would, you know, afterwards we'd be at the juice bar and I'd, I'd be talking to people and everyone talks about their favorite subject, which is themselves. <laughs> and everybody talks about the, the, their favorite part of their favorite subject, usually, which is why their life sucks. Hmm. Right? That's, you know, it seems to be most people's pastime, especially if they're plugged into the media. Hmm. So I would get excited. I'd be like, I know how to fix that. And I'd give them a strategy. And because I was excited, they'd get excited. Because I was enthusiastic. Enthusiasm. Yeah, I'll tell you right now, especially ladies, any ladies watching this, listen carefully, right? Enthusiasm, and I learned this from George Zalaki, mm. is the least expensive, but the most beneficial cosmetic in the world. It'll transform people. <laughs> you could get beautiful people that look good on the front cover of a magazine, that have, you know, $500 worth of makeup, yeah, and they, you just don't want to be around them because they're not enthusiastic. Mm. And you can have people that, let's just say, out of you know, being nice, wouldn't make the cover of a magazine, yeah? But you just want to be around them because they're, they're enthusiastic. Yes. You know, there's two types of people in the world, those who are inspired and those who aren't, case closed. Hmm. So because I was inspired and enthusiastic, it would rub off. Yeah. And they'd get all like, wow, this is brilliant. And I'd, let's say, for example, I'd tell them to read Think and Grow Rich. Hmm. And yeah, after 20 minutes, half an hour, they'd leave and I'd think, wow, I changed somebody's life, this is brilliant. And I'd get excited for the next week thinking about what they were thinking. I mean, I wonder what chapter of the book they're on. I wonder if they got to the part where it's auto-suggestion or the sixth sense or, you know, uh, about how they, they cultivated their desire or definiteness of purpose. And what would happen is I would see them, let's say two weeks later, I'd bump into them again in the gym. And I'd be like, hey, John, how, do you, how are you getting on with the book? And the answer would inevitably be something like, oh, yeah, what was it called again? What was the name of the author? And I would wow. sink. My energy would drop. I'd be like, I spent 20 minutes showing this person how to change their life, and they were uninspired after 20 minutes and, and, yeah, uh, of leaving me, and nothing changed. Mm. That's not the kind of mentee I want to attract or will work with. Mm. 
And I will contrast that. Several years later, I was living on the palm in Dubai, and you know, I get an email through from you know, some kid called Tony. And he shares me a story, and I get a lot of stories. And a lot of people either want free coaching or, or whatever, or, you know, and I don't get a chance to reply to everybody you know, these days because I get so much, so much mail come through. But there was something about this kid's story that touched me. And he told me that um, he had started off, got a scholarship to go study in America. And he lived in you know, the UK. He's half Brazilian, half English. He looks a little bit like a young version of Obama. And he went and he was studying in America on full scholarship. And one day the teacher comes in and the teacher says, oh, today we're going to talk about China. And he shared some stats with him that made Tony go, wow, the future is in China. He drops out of college. He enrolls in a school out in the boondogs in the backwaters of Beijing, doesn't speak Chinese, the only foreign national, and goes to try and learn Chinese as a foreign student, paying his own way. His parents live in Dubai. He comes to Dubai and to visit his parents. While he's there, his dad has a heart attack. And he goes to uh, hospital, but in Dubai, it's not free Medicare. You've got to pay. And if you don't pay, they take your passport and you can't leave the hospital until you pay. So his dad runs up about a quarter of a million dollars in fees very quickly, and the family can't afford to pay. Tony's struggling. Anyway, Tony goes on a crusade. He goes around supermarkets, putting up posters, save my dad. And in a few weeks time, raises the money to get his dad out of hospital so he can get him to England so he can get on free healthcare. Wow. Just after he raises the money, his dad dies. Tony's distraught. He's like, you know, he goes back to China. He's broke, he's overweight, he's depressed. And he go back to college. He's studying to be you know, accountancy. And he sees an article in the Beijing magazine, English speaking magazine, doing a health challenge, 12 week health challenge. He says, right, I'm gonna take it. I need to focus my mind. He enters the challenge. And he essentially gets up at four o'clock, goes to the gym, trains. Goes, works his first job till about eight, then goes to college till about five, works his second job till 10, goes back to the gym, trains, gets four hours sleep, gets up, does it again and again and again. Learning nutrition, learning training. He wins the competition. Now, he wins a little bit of money, he wins a bit of notoriety, but more importantly, he discovers his passion is to help people through health. So that's what he wants to do. So he becomes a personal trainer. He's still at college and he's earning enough money to run enough ads to get enough clients to earn enough money to run a few ads. It's a common pattern. He sees me online, he sees my story, he writes to me, tells me this story and says, look, you seem like you, you know a little bit about business. Can you please give me some tips on how I can be better? So I was touched, but it was an authentic story and I was touched. So I write back and I say, you know something, Tony? Yeah, love your story, thanks for sharing. Here's some of the books I would read, here's some of the beliefs I would question, here's yeah, what I would do. Hmm. I get a little email back saying thank you. However, after that, something very unique happens that happens almost never with mentees. I get another email two weeks later. I read the books, here's what I learned, here's how I'm applying it, here's what's different. Now that doesn't happen very often. Talk is cheap, action counts. I took the time to write back to him. He took the time to go and do something with that and let me know what was happening. And that impressed me. He says, look, I'm coming to Dubai to visit my mum in a few weeks. Is there any chance that we might be able to just meet and have coffee? I can say thank you. I'm like, Tony, I'm impressed with how you've applied yourself. Very few people that happens with. You know? Forget coffee, let's do lunch. He writes back, he says, look, I'm really embarrassed. I can't afford to buy you lunch. I'm like, Tony, I'll buy lunch. All right, come in. Anyway, two weeks later, I get a knock at the door. Kid shows up. Yeah, yeah, six foot, yeah, built. Yeah, he's into his training. We go for lunch. And we're talking away, and I said to him, how much do you charge as a personal trainer? He said, $50 an hour, which is quite decent in, in China. I said, okay, why aren't you charging $500 an hour? He's like, no one would pay it. I'm like, you're wrong, and you're wrong on two counts. One. I don't know China too well, but I, I, I'm an expert on understanding people and culture mm. yeah, and human behavior. I said, now China, right now, if you look at it, it, it's fairly open, the fact that it was communism and the avant-garde political system is still very much communism, but the economy is now driven by capitalism. They learned from the Hong Kongese and the Taiwanese and they copied it. The membrane in between the two is controlled corruption and has been for many years. 
But that controlled corruption has made a lot of people very rich. And a lot of wealthy people like to demonstrate their wealth with their waistline. Mm -hmm. They're walking hard attacks waiting to happen. They've got no quality of life. They've got to pay women to sleep with them. They've got no relationship with their kids. Yeah, they're out of breath walking upstairs. If you could turn around their lives genuinely and give them a quality of life back for $500 an hour, yeah, they're worth $100 million, they'd pay it in a heartbeat mm -hmm. to enjoy their wealth. Mm -hmm. The second reason is that the predominant driving need for many people in China is all about face or what we call significance. There's people in China that would pay $500 an hour just to brag to their friend in the country club they've got a more expensive personal trainer than he has. <laughs> so here's the point. It's not that there aren't people that would pay $500 an hour, hmm. it's that you don't believe you're worth it. Hmm. And if you want to see an area of people destroy themselves, it's in the area of self-image. So let's work on that. So we worked on some self-belief issues. We worked on him you know, getting to a, a place where he valued himself and what he brought to the table, inner work, not outer work. Anyway, long story short, he went back, he fired half of his clients, he put his prices up to $250 an hour, and he started making more money than he'd ever made. A year later, he's charging $500 an hour, he's got the British consulate uh, ambassador, the Chinese ambassador, the Chinese national basketball team are hiring him, <laughs> and he comes back, we work on it a little bit more. Wow. A year later, he's now charging $10,000 to do a four-hour health seminar for companies. Wow. And I remember a guy called up, guy that owned a resort says, listen, I want to hire you and it's, I'll give you five grand and a business class ticket. And Tony says, no, it's 10 grand and a first class ticket. <laughs> the guy says, no, but you can come use the resort. It's all great. It's five grand business class ticket. That's my offer. And this guy's worth about a hundred million dollars. And when I knew Tony owned himself, it was this. He picked up the phone. He says, you know something? For a rich guy, you're pretty cheap. And he hung up. That's owning it. He called back three days later, 10 grand and a first class ticket and enjoy my resort. Tony today is a national celebrity in China. He's a millionaire. He's the most expensive personal trainer in China. He charges $5,000 an hour, 100 grand for 20 sessions. And the guy is a classic example of somebody who applies himself and is one of the most, uh, one of the mentees I'm most proud of. Tony Nicholson, yeah, go Google him. He's, he's a success story and I've got nothing but admiration and respect because he applied what he learned. That, my friend, is the difference between somebody who yeah, is never going to change their life or takes on mentorship and applies it. And I'll work with that person all day long. Wow, Peter. Thank you very much for sharing all these amazing stories and uh, all the amazing lessons that you learned through your experience. And uh, I'm sure that people watching by now, they want to know more <laughs> about your lessons, about your lessons in business, about your lessons in life. And I have good news for you because Peter has a lot of material out there. You can just go to his website petersage.com and there is a lot of free material there. Peter, it was a great honor to have you on board and if you have any last word to say to our audience, feel free. The honor and pleasure is mine and all I'll say is, you know, when it comes to seeking wisdom, never ever let anybody tell you you're not worth it. See you soon.